I'd like to welcome you to the Surfray sponsored webinar on customizing search refiners in SharePoint 2010. Hi, my name is Josh Noble. I'm the co-author of the book Pro SharePoint 2010 Search. I'm also a search consultant with Surfray, the leading provider of search and findability enhancements for SharePoint. Today I'll be showing you three customizations in SharePoint 2010's refinement panel. First we'll look how to add numbered refiners to the refiner panel. Uh, then we'll be looking at how to change the accuracy of the refinement panel by increasing the accuracy index. And finally uh, we'll look into how to add a new custom refinement category uh, to the refinement panel. I recognize that half of you that are watching are also using Ontolica Search on SharePoint 2010. So after showing you how to make these customizations in SharePoint, I'll also walk you through how to do them in Ontolica. Uh, I should also mention that one of my co-authors, Robert Pittock, is on this call and, and will be responding to any questions that you have through the chat. So before diving into the SharePoint 2010's refinement panel and how to actually customize it, I, I believe it's first important to uh, understand what the refinement panel is doing. So here's our standard SharePoint 2010 refinement panel. And uh, SharePoint can be set to show refinements based off of any managed properties. So what's occurring here is that SharePoint is actually looking into the top set of results in your search result set and pulling back values for various different managed properties that it finds within that particular result set. Then it lets you refine down and choose a particular uh, value. In this case, let's say we want to refine down on Word files. Uh, you'd be able to do that and then restrict your search down to just the files uh, that were of the Word file type. Once properties are set in SharePoint, uh, as I mentioned, it will look through the top results in the result set for the properties that have matched that uh, predefined refinement category uh, based on the documents in the result set and then fills in these categories as we mentioned. Uh, in order to get the most out of the refinement panel, you'll need to make sure that you customize it for your user's particular needs. All of the refinements for the refinement panel are pretty much done here at the web part level. It's very important to note that everything I show you here is a manual process. If you have multiple search centers, you'll need to make sure that you make these changes at each one of them. So here you'll find all the various refinement or all the various web parts that we have displayed on this particular SharePoint 2010 search center. Uh, for the, the purposes of this, uh, we're only concerned about this particular refinement panel. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit the refinement panel. And here you'll notice that there's several very basic settings that you can make. Uh, for example, uh, as we'll see here later, you can change the accuracy index. Uh, you can change the number of categories that you're displaying on uh, if there's many more than just uh, this default number displayed. Uh, and then we'll also see that you can change the uh, number of values, uh, the number of characters that display for each particular value. To make adjustments to anything but the most basic settings in SharePoint 2010's refinement panel, you are going to need to be comfortable with XML code. Uh, to edit the XML, uh, you'll need to open the filter category definition XML, uh, which can be found right here. And then you'll want to select all of this and copy it into a notepad so that you can work with it a bit, a bit easier. As a word of caution, if you're not comfortable with XML, then please be very careful uh, doing anything here. Uh, if you save edits that are not done properly and don't have a backup copy of the XML, then you may find yourself deploying a whole new search center uh, due to bad code. Uh, to mitigate this risk, I always recommend to make sure to have a backup copy of the XML before doing any edits. This way, if you make a mistake, at least you can reset it. Uh, that's something that I've already done uh, in this particular case. So for those of you that are not familiar with XML, I do want to point out a couple things here. Uh, first off is the opening brackets. Uh, opening brackets will open up a tag. Uh, and so any of the particular categories that we'll be working with, uh, you can find between uh, opening tags there. And then um, consequently also you'll find them at the end of a tag, a closing bracket, uh, which will close the particular tags. So this works a lot like algebra. Uh, parameters in the XML are found between these opening and closing brackets. 
one of the things that's going to make your life a little bit easier when you're doing you know, looking around within this XML is doing a little bit of search. Uh, so what you'll want to do in this case is search for category. Uh, when you search for category, you'll be able to find uh, any of the particular categories uh, that are listed within the refinement panel. So in this case, by searching for category and looking right after it, I can find here that this is the particular parameter for the result type refinement. If I jump down the list to a little later, I can find this category is actually in regards to the site refinement, and so on and so forth. I can jump through the page here. So the first thing that we want to do, as we mentioned, uh, was to be able to add numbered refiners. Uh, and you can do this to any categories that are displayed on the refinement panel. So here we're going to go to our first one, and we'll find category. And then we'll notice that this is the result type category. Uh, I happen to know that right before the, uh, the closing bracket, that this particular parameter is showing up less link text equals show fewer. So if you're not quite sure where the closing bracket is, uh, you can search for this and that will take you straight to it. So what we're going to want to do here is add a new property in. So the property that we particularly want to show in this case is something that would display the refinement counts. So that particular property is show counts equals and then count in quotations. So this particular property is going to add uh, the numbered refiners. And so in this case, by adding it in this one spot, I am going to show numbered refiners for the result type. But I can jump throughout the page and find other refinement categories to throw this into. Let's do the second one here. Uh, this will be throwing numbered refiners into the site. Uh, refinement category and then we'll just do one more here and if you notice I'm just searching for less because I happen to know that that will bring me to the end of a particular tag so here I'll add that in and then what I'm going to do I'm going to select all this XML copy it and replace the XML that was already in the refinement panel so before I accept these changes, I do need to make sure that this checkbox is not checked. If you have Use Default Configuration checked, uh, then it, SharePoint will ignore any of the changes that you just made. So I need to make sure that's unchecked, and then I'm going to apply my changes. And I'll select OK. Now, as a note of caution, when you're manipulating the XML, make sure not to add any unnecessary line breaks. I know by doing this, it's sometimes easier to see the XML, uh, but uh, it can also cause some unnecessary challenges. So then we're going to be saving and closing. In a real scenario, you'd want to make sure that you checked in uh, because your users won't be able to see your changes until you check in uh, the page again. And at this point, we can see that I now have numbered refiners for the result type refinement category, the site refinement category, and the author refinement category. If we remember, uh, I didn't do anything to manipulate that final refinement category, so I'm not seeing numbered refiners there. For those of you working with real environments, you probably have far more content than my little test server here. Uh, and so you might want to change the particular accuracy index or, or the number of documents that are being analyzed by SharePoint's refinement panel. Uh, by default, SharePoint 2010 will only consider the first 50 items in the search result set when calculating refiners. Uh, the accuracy index is a feature which controls how many search result items are analyzed by SharePoint and used for the refinement panel. If the accuracy index is higher, then the more documents that are considered and uh, consequently uh, more relevant results are brought back to the refinement panel. For example, if I pull back a result set that is uh, were PDFs or something that I might be looking for. And those PDFs are only located uh, between results 300 and 500. But the SharePoint 2010 refinement panel is set to the default count of 50. Uh, then it won't even recognize that PDFs are an option for the refinement panel. Um, this can be changed by changing the accuracy index, as we've mentioned. 
So if I want SharePoint 2010 to look at PDFs uh, between the search results of 300 and 500 in the refinement panel, I need to change this accuracy in index, which is fortunately quite easy to do. So I'm going to go to the site actions here and go back into our web part. I'm going to edit our web part. Now, I should mention that there are limitations to the accuracy index in SharePoint 2010. Uh, as you increase the accuracy index, you do place a larger performance demand on SharePoint. And, and depending on the number of queries your portal is handling and your available software, this could cause problems in certain environments. It's also important to note that SharePoint 2010's refinements are considered shallow refiners. Uh, this means that the accuracy index cannot be set for anything higher than 500 items. If you set the accuracy index for anything more than 500, uh, SharePoint will do a hard adjustment back down to 500 items. Uh, this means that you, if you have very large document sets, uh, you are not able to analyze the entire document set. If instead of your PDFs being located within search result items 300 to 500, maybe they're located uh, between the results 1500 and 2000, then you won't be able to return them back as a refinement option. If you have uh, a need to analyze larger document sets, then you can implement enhancements such as Ontolica Search or replace the SharePoint search engine uh, with something like Fast Search Server. A little bit later here, I'll show you how to change the accuracy index in Ontolica. So here, we'll notice that I want to change this particular accuracy index, and by default, it's set to 50. So changing the, changing this is as easily as easy as uh, adding in an extra zero here, and that takes me up to my max of 500 uh, within the refinement panel. So I'm going to apply this here. Then I'll click OK and save and close my page. Now here we'll, we'll notice now that I am looking at more than 50 results. Here I'm pulling back something with 106 results. But uh, let's just kind of test this out and see what our limitations are at. Let's do a broader search. Search for A and wildcard. It should bring me back a, a few more results, even though I don't have a ton of documents in this particular result set. Here I'm pulling back 360 results, so uh, here I am able to see 300, 122, uh, so I am able to increase that fortunately.